Alright guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I have a very entertaining email that was sent from a subscriber. This is from a guy, he is 38 years old, and he's going to share his story, how he, like so many guys before him, rushed into a marriage with a gal that he was completely in love with him, but later to find out that she only married him for his resources. And worse yet, once they got together and she felt comfortable and had him pretty much not only by... Uh, his heart in, in her grip, but also his balls, wanted to have an open marriage. And because this guy was weak and didn't know any better and didn't think very highly of himself, he agreed to it. And it had been a di his life, his, his self-esteem, his worth has been a downward spiral ever since. However, an unlikely source, a guardian angel, if you will, came into his life and recommended my work to him. And he immersed himself in the videos here and started learning where he was going wrong. And now he's been on a path to turn everything around in his life and also get rid of her. And it's a great story here that I think you guys are really going to enjoy. Now, as you can see, this is very long. It's been kind of the theme this week. A lot of you guys have been sending these very long but excellent stories and nobody seems to mind. So here's another long one. It's definitely worth it. And this is going to be part one of no doubt more two, three updates from this guy because it's that good but you're gonna see guys as I get into this he literally was raised from birth to be the nice guy pleaser through his family his culture and all that so it's no wonder this happened to him and this is why it's so important that guys have a masculine role model to guide them from an early age point out reality amongst many other things so guys don't end up like this guy here so his story could definitely help a lot of guys out to not make his mistakes and also see that you can turn things around so i'm not going to say any more than that and get right into it because it's a long one he says here uh hey ssm i would love to say that i've been listening to your channel for years since that would probably save me a lot of trouble Unfortunately, this is not the case for me. I had to crash, burn, and cry like an idiot in front of a friend before I was guided to your content. I don't know if my story would be good for the channel. Bro, this is perfect for the channel. But posting it or not, I want to thank you and help me see things as they are and that it's never too late to learn and do something to get out of a shitty situation. I apologize if there are parts that might not make much sense, but I've kept some of the information vague and skipped some of the details since I'm still going through a legal process, and I don't want to be recognized by anyone that knows my wife. You'll see why. Also, English is my third language, so I apologize for any errors. He says, uh, I'm an immigrant from a culture that worships marriage and having children. I'm also the only son of a family with four sisters and a single mother. So as you may have guessed, I was raised to believe women are queens and men should try their best to marry one of them and do everything to make her happy. I'm guessing he's from India. That's my guess based on what he's saying here and other things that he mentioned in this email. And it seems that is a culture where definitely guys are conditioned a lot of these things that definitely don't help them. Right here, all girls, single MOM, that culture... This poor bastard. Um, from the moment I moved to a different country, it was clear I didn't quite fit in. I was the nerdy guy that loved math and understanding how physics impacts every aspect of our lives. So while most of my classmates dated, I did homework and took extra classes. And while most of my classmates ran marathons, my idea of a marathon was sitting on my couch and watching all of the Star Wars and Lord of the Rings movies. Well, brother, I would rather sit on the couch and watch Star Wars and Lord of the Rings movies and marathons than run a freaking marathon or a half marathon or even a 5K. I hate to run. I'll do two hours or three hours of boxing training. That's awesome. But you're not going to see me out running down the street. Oh, hell no. Uh, now, I'm a 38-year-old nerd and computer programmer at a great company. In short, I have an excellent salary, but little to no experience with socializing or dating. Well, brother, I'm going to try to help you in that department down the road. But right now, we're working on fixing the problems. Now to the story. When I was 33 years old, my company hired a new receptionist. Let's call her Jessica. Since most Jessicas I know are effing crazy, Jessica, 35 years old back then, was gorgeous, funny, sexy as hell, and for some reason, interested in me. 
Well, she knows the company you work for, she knows the position you have, and connect the dots, that means you, uh, no doubt, make a lot of money. Therefore, as you say, interested in you. Because remember, if they didn't get a, a ring on their finger by 30, by the time they're in their 30s, they're looking for that provider. And what do I tell you guys all the time that if you've got, if suddenly women are paying attention to you, well, they wouldn't give you the time of day when you're younger because surprise, surprise, you have a good job or great job and make a lot of money and have resources. That's why. I hate to break it to you, but that's why. And that's why she had an interest in him. I'm going to get so much shit for this, but she asked me out and I said yes. After a month, she told me she loved me, and two months later, she was living with me. I know. Smack. Two months, you had this chick moving with you? You're out of your damn mind. Too many movies, my man. You thought you hit the jackpot. You're thinking the movies were right. The movies told me that one day, that girl, I'd meet that girl. And it would be magical, and we'd fall in love overnight to move in together and be happily ever after. Unfortunately, the movies are effing bullshit. And you'll see real soon. Uh, she hadn't been in my house for more than a few weeks when she started hinting at marriage. Leaving wedding magazines in the TV room, claiming they were from a friend, talking casually about how her fingers were bloated, but now they were excised, and kept watching a damn TV series that did nothing but show women trying on wedding dresses. Needless to say, I fell for it, and at the end of the year, we got married at a huge Christmas wedding. Smack! Less than one year, you're with this chick, and you marry her. Are you out of your damn mind? Now, I know he knows this, but still, I have to make that clear. You need to spend years with a chick, getting to know her, vetting her, finding what she's like, her family, her friends, everything. But she was rushing because she was in her 30s. Her prime is past, and she found a guy that she could tell. Because women, they can spot that nice guy, that nice guy, that shy guy a mile away. And they sit there, they're, they, they scan the room like the Terminator, and they look around, and they say, target acquired, and they go talk to that nice guy, flirt with him, ask him out like this, and off we go. And that nice guy who's not used to beautiful women paying attention to him is like, please, I'll take her. Uh, needless to say, I fell for it. We got married, blah, blah, blah. He says, I know, I know. She was a walking red flag. And I deserve a smack for this. Well, you got plenty. But at that time, I truly believe love happened the same way it did in the cheesy movies that I used to watch with my sisters all the time. You should have been watching action movies, not cheesy romance movies. Here's the deal, guys. Let me just make this clear. When you have a young guy raised in an all-women environment... He's going to pick on the feminine traits. Also, if he's raised by a single MOM who probably has been burned by men in the past or her dad, that single MOM, yes, I have to spell that out and you all know why, may decide, I'm going to raise my son to be a gentleman because I don't like the way men act. So I'm going to raise my son to be the perfect gentleman to treat women like they are goddesses and do everything for them and never call on their BS, et cetera, et cetera. And that's why you get some of these these blue pill nice guys that just are conditioned from birth to be this way and don't know any better. And then they are taken advantage of. And I, so I don't want that to happen to you guys. But this is happening here. And oh, we're just getting started. Fast forward to the beginning of this year. COVID restrictions were becoming a thing of the past. And I was allowed to work from the office. And yes, I meant I as in me. Since from the moment Jessica and I were married, she quit her job to be a stay-at-home mom. Ah, imagine that. Now she doesn't have to work anymore. Plot twist, we don't have any kids. But I made more than enough for money for both of us, and in my mind, I was doing the right thing, treating my wife like a queen. Smack. He was conditioned for this. For the next couple of weeks after I returned to the office, I began to notice how my wife started to work out more, had a lot of girls' nights out and friends over to our place, and became even more protective of her phone. She's always been interest, uh, but she's always been intense with guarding her guarding her phone. But in that month, she treated it like Gollum treat, uh, treated his damn precious ring. Gee, what could be going on? You guys know what's going on. Do you think simp me worried or was suspicious of her? No. 
because I was happy and she was happy, at least until March. My wife sat me down and after telling me how much she loves me and how I'm the only man that will ever have her heart, it would be good for our relationship to open up the marriage. Oh, good Lord. You know, you get to the point, guys, that I read enough of these and I can just see how these things are going to go. From the first few paragraphs, I can see exactly what's going to happen here. This poor bastard. He, in his mind, I'm giving her my all and doing everything that the movies told me I'm supposed to do. Probably everything that girls told me I'm supposed to do. Everything my mom told me I'm supposed to do. And what do I get here? She wants to open marriage, hook up with other dudes. That's not what the movies say. Unfortunately, when you're this guy, when you act like this and kiss her ass and not see the red flags and reality, this type of thing happens. And do you think he stands up for himself here? Do you think he says, go to hell, this ain't happening? Or do you think he lets fear run the show? He says here, she begged and told me all the ways it would make us happy. What, you mean her happy. How manly I would be for being so confident about who I am that I wouldn't even worry about having other men competing for her since I'd already won. Oh, you're a real man if you allow this, huh? And if I didn't open it, then I'd be mean and that I'd be, I'm insecure and didn't know how long she could love someone that abusive and controlling. You're abusive and controlling if you don't allow her to get sausage from as many dudes as she wants. Look at the perfect situation for her. She marries a guy with resources. She doesn't have to work. Now that they're married by law, she's going to be entitled to all these resources. And she can go hook up with other dudes because she knows he'll be so fearful of losing her, he'll go along with this. Never go along with this. It's over. It's, it, it was over before it even started. She married you for your money your resources. And that's a horrible thing. And you don't want to think about that, but it's the truth. As much of a hit you would take in the divorce, you should have ended it right then and there. Because believe me, she's probably already hooking up with other dudes. If not, they're already lined up. Guaranteed. It's over. Uh, so I agreed. Smack. Never agreed to that, guys. Ever. But do you see how his lack of self-esteem and self-worth and the brainwashing to be accommodating and give the treat the girl like the queen impacts his behavior? No man with real self-worth or self-esteem would ever tolerate this shit, let alone marry someone like her. This is why guys have to build themselves up. So important. The following months were the worst months of my entire life. Since Jessica is a gorgeous woman, she had no trouble finding dates almost immediately. Shocker. So while she was happy parading with more than five guys that I knew about, I was at home alone, just feeling as if I were in suspended animation, just fucking numb. I'm sorry, man. I really am. She's a piece of shit. But, you know, at the end of the day, man, you allow it to happen. You did. The worst was whenever we went to my mother's house for dinner. Jessica loved to pretend that we were the perfect couple and how lucky she was to have married a man like me. And my mom loved it. She was so proud to raise a man that knew how to be a good man, a good husband. What I tell you about those mom, single moms raising their guys to be the perfect gentleman, because they were burned and they're mad at their ex, so they're going to make sure that their son is a kiss-ass pleaser. As if you guys haven't figured this out already and heard me say this 10,000 times, never take advice about women for women. You don't ask a fish how to catch a fish. You ask the fisherman. Take advice from women about dating, relationships, pickups, everything from well, from experienced, well-rounded men, masculine men. They'll tell you how it is. For months, I debated telling my family what was going on, but I felt like failing in my marriage would mean I was failing in life and letting them down. And that's something I couldn't, and that's something I couldn't handle. So I kept quiet. Bro, you could have ended it, and it wouldn't be the end of the world. You start over your life. You take a hit in the divorce, most certainly, but you could pick things up. And then it happened. I rocked bottom in the worst possible way. One morning in my office, two co-workers announced they were happy to tell everyone that they were getting married. He says relationships aren't forbidden here, and it's pretty common to date other employees. Seeing her watch him happily, unlike the contempt way my wife watches me, it just broke me. I congratulated them and snuck into one big quiet room at the end of the lower floors and cried. To make it worse, I noticed a little too late that I wasn't alone in the room. 
Behind a wall of books, sitting in a bunch of puffs, were three female employees from the marketing department. I swear if I hadn't already lost my dignity when I agreed to open the marriage, this would have been the moment I lost it. No one can blame you for letting your emotions out, but then having three chicks from your office see this? <sighs> However, there's a silver lining to this situation. But little did I know that that was a mistake and moment of absolute embarrassment would be the start of how and why of writing this email. Sitting on one of those puffs was a good friend of mine. We'll call her Ro, a 30-year-old female. Ro and I met a few years ago at one of the company's seminars. We were grouped together for the teamwork activities, but ended up bonding with our love of movies, video games, and dark humor. Ro walked closer to me and asked if I was okay, if I needed to call someone or if I wanted them to leave. I was so embarrassed, she probably thought someone had died with the way I was crying. I don't know what demon possessed me or if I needed to tell someone what was happening with me, but I just said, she asked, and I agreed to open our marriage. I would not ordinarily go talking about that type of thing. However, knowing how this story goes, this actually was a good thing. I have no idea how to describe her reaction, but from all the possible ways I thought this could go, what happened next didn't even cross my mind. She just nodded while saying, okay, okay. She then took her bag, asked me to follow her, and guided me to one of the private meeting rooms. Then she asked for my computer, opened YouTube, and searched SSM. Scrolled for one specific video and clicked on it. She said I need to watch that, and afterward, I had her phone number if I wanted to talk, and then she left. Holy shit, brother. Well, I tell you guys, 4% of my audience are, are women. And I got a lot of women that write me thanking me for my work because they can't stand how the modern gals are nowadays. They can't stand what Ephesus movement has done to guys, amongst many other things. They want to see their sons grow up to be strong men and not end up with these harpies today. Or women that, you get the point. Well, it looks like this is one of the 4%. It says here, Honestly, I was confused as hell, but unless this girl of the ring would have come out of that video and eat my soul, there was no way my life would have sucked more if I watched it or not. So I pressed play and watched one of your videos about a wife who opened up her marriage and the husband called another woman right there in front of her, making the wife freak the F out. That video is probably one of my most popular videos ever, definitely the most popular video of this year. And in fact, I'm going to post a link to that video in the comment section in case you guys want to see it and you didn't see it. I'm glad you saw that video, right about open marriage. And that guy handled it the way he should handle it. To say I was shocked, horrified, and feeling like an idiot would be an understatement. And I have to say, that was the first real smack I received. Uh, watching that, hearing how well he handled it, and how he left while being on top, I wished I could have acted as he did. I was angry that I let myself be so weak, and I, I allowed my life to be in that state that it was. Freaking miserable. Your video made me feel so angry and disgusted with myself that I, it generally woke me up. So like a true marathon nerd, I spent the entire rest of the day watching your videos. And in that, that, that single day, you became a changed man. You saw reality for what it was. Imagine, guys, this guy's whole life, he's been watching these cheesy romantic BS movies about how men are supposed to be. And he behaves in such a manner, look what he got. Then he starts watching my stuff, which makes a lot of guys hate me because they don't like what I talk about. And he's seeing a whole different world there. Uh, that night, that night, I came home later than usual. I was expecting my wife to ask me why, but she didn't even notice. Instead, she ignored me most of the evening until at night. I sat, she sat in my lap and asked, all, asked, acted all cute, speaking in a baby voice and telling me she needed money because she wanted to go to the spa since she was so tired. I hate that baby voice crap that some gals do. Maybe it's just me. I think it's repulsive. Tired about what? I hired a maid, a cook, and we have a gardener. What the F is she tired from? From sucking my life away? And that was the second I was hit with the sad realization that I was, wasn't raised to become a gentleman. I was raised to be, become a doormat, and I excelled at it. Yes, you were, my friend. And it's a possibility your mom simply just didn't know any better. You know? Gonna raise my boy to be a good man. And your sister. but Or she did. I don't know. But bro, you're not... It ain't over yet. There is hope. And you'll see, guys, this gets good. 
I told her sure just to get away from me. They snuck into the office room that I have at home and I kept watching your videos. The more I watched, the more I saw things for what they were. Her attitude, the way she spoke, how she behaved, every little thing was so damn clear now. I don't know if women get a manual on what to do or how to ask for stuff, but it was insane how she clicked every single one of the boxes. But your videos and all the information you gave were like getting the cheat codes of a level you thought was impossible to pass. And then suddenly it was all written on a freaking map. After a few days of finishing your entire videos and rewatching some of the open marriage ones, I texted Ro and asked if we could talk. Dude, you watched all my videos? I got about 1,100 on this channel and about over 300 on the other. That's over 1,400 videos. I don't know if you watched them all. I, I would say you probably watched a lot and probably all the open marriage ones. But if you did, thank you very much for your business. But he uh, talk about a marathon. He immersed himself, and I, he's a different man now. I texted Ro and asked if we could talk. To be honest, I had no idea what we were going to talk about, but she was the one who knew exactly what to show me. So I assumed she would know what to do next. Well, again, I, I'd be wary about asking advice from women. However, if this woman pointed you in the direction of my work, which is not impossible because I do have a female, 4% are, are the women that watch me, 4% of the audience are female, according to the YouTube statistics I get on the app, then she could be of service. The fact that she just pointed my, to my work makes her a guardian angel, let's be honest here. And thank you, Ro, for watching my, my work and pointing this brother to some help. I'm not too proud of myself, but the very next day I met with Ro at her house, and I bawled my eyes out. Okay, bro, let's, let's say that crying business for when you're by yourself going forward. I told her everything I was go that was going on with my wife and my life and how no, no one from my family knew what was happening since they all loved Jessica. I even got the courage to ask her if she thought Jessica already had a line of men she wanted to sleep with before opening the marriage. I'm willing to bet you that's definitely what's going on, bro. Sorry to tell you, but yes. Yes, she answered immediately. So I asked her what the hell I should do now. And she said, you need to get your shit together and get a good lawyer and leave her. There's nothing else you can do. So I called one of my managers who knew I had a, had a tough divorce a few years before COVID and asked for his lawyer's number. Good, brother. That's what you need to do. It's over. And yes, you're going to get hammered, given that she doesn't work anymore and you've been providing all these years. But you take the hit and you'll move on. And thank the Lord you don't have any kids. I would love to say that meeting my lawyer went well, but as we all know, I was screwed. Even without kids and child support, stay-at-home Jessica hasn't worked for years. She's entirely dependent on me, and even if we live in an at-fault state, opening the marriage doesn't count as cheating. What a great deal that open marriage is for the women. Think about this. They marry the guy. Instantly, they are bound by law, and they're going to be favored in the family courts. And if the guy wants to end it because of open marriage, which is just permission to cheat, she can say, well... I asked him. He agreed to the open marriage. It's not cheating. Even though it was under duress, obviously. So with a divorce, I couldn't do anything about it. But my lawyer instructed me to make every change that I could. I had to change my will, change my beneficiary at my job, cut all her insurance, and take her off all my credit cards and bank account, except for a smaller family account. And I put my summer house in my grandfather's name. My grandfather agreed when I told him why, since he was the only family member who hated my wife. So that came in very handy in the situation. How interesting that all the women in his family, his sisters and mom, love his wife. But Grandpa, who's no doubt a masculine man who's been around, he hates her. Gee, it probably would have been a good idea to listen to Grandpa when he was courting this girl or she was courting him. But then again, it all happened so fast that he rushed to the altar and married her. He probably didn't have a chance to grandpa to meet her. Uh, now the problem was to wait for the paperwork to be done and, and my lawyer to find the best time to file for divorce. Now some of you may disagree with this, while others would have done the same, but I was tired of being a doormat and her ATM machine, and I decided to change things until all things were done. I don't blame your brother. It's time you start getting your freaking man card back and start uh, fighting fire with fire. And watch this. 
I told Ro I want to make my wife feel like shit, just like the way she made me feel all those months. She said there's nothing worse for a woman than to see a man that they used to have getting with a younger or hotter woman than she is. She then offered to set up my Tinder account and encouraged me to get out and start meeting women instead of staying at home waiting for her like a pet. There you go. So that's what I did. I went all rocky and started to focus on my grind. I hired a personal trainer and began to eat healthier. Pretty much all the advice that you give SSM. And it worked wonders. I felt physically and mentally stronger and just a better version of myself. There you go. That's why I'm so tough on you guys about self-improvement and on your grind and keeping your bodies in shape and working out and hitting the gym. When a man feels strong and successful and in control and powerful, nothing's going to shake him. He can get through the worst of times. But when a man feels weak and out of control, out of balance, that's when others can take advantage of him. You know, therapists always want to try to make their clients in a state where they can feel loved and all that. And that can work on women. But a man doesn't need to feel loved. A man needs to feel strong and powerful and capable and in control of his life. And that can make a guy feel better and turn things around. Now, this is all awesome and everything. However, as he's admitted, he's a nerd. And he's shy and has social issues. So you can do all the working out you want and get your body into shape and all that. And that's not going to happen in a week, I might add. But still, this guy needs a lot of work when it comes to social skills and talking to which he obviously is not very good at. So he can do all this, but it's not going to get him too far. And just watch this. That type of improvement takes practice and time, which you can do, but we'll get back to that later. He says, the only issue is here, I was still and forever will be a shy nerd. That's what I was thinking when I read this. I can't talk to women, and the idea of talking to a bunch and explaining them my situation made me feel even worse. And you probably would get get tongue tongue tied and would it wouldn't be good yeah i couldn't do it so the next time ro asked me how i was doing i was honest and told her why i closed tinder and that i gave up on making her feel the same way she made me feel that i was okay with just leaving her well i wouldn't give up so quickly on that then ro asked me if i was stupid enough to set rules when we opened the marriage and i said no we only agree to tell each other when meeting someone else Great, she smiled. We can make her think I'm your new partner. Oh, this should be fun. Uh, One thing I must add is that Ro is 30 years old, half French, half Latina woman who can easily be a nine. There's a lot of foreigners in this company. Therefore, my wife loathes her. Since since, uh, minute one of our friendship, my wife gave me so much shit, whining for days, I had to cut her off, and then she wanted nothing to do with that S-L-U-T. Your wife is labeling this woman who's helping you out, or at least she did in the past, the S-L-U-T. And uh, what about your wife? Let's be honest here. Now, one of the things my company seeks while hiring marketing personnel like Ro is that employees have the creativity and potential to come up with the craziest, most random ideas on how to push the company toward our consumers' daily lives. I understand that, and I've seen how they work for years. Still, I was not expecting that idea. I was thinking about that. Hell, let her help. Let her pretend you have a thing going on. I'll make your wife freaking crazy. And of course, you have an open marriage, so you can do whatever you want. I knew she was my friend and she was helping me, but that was too much. And I've now learned to never walk blindly when it comes to women. So I asked her why she would offer that. Good question. And she told me I remembered, I reminded her of her dad, and she would have loved to have someone help him, but no one did. And she saw what that does to a lonely man. Besides, it would be hilarious. Her own words. In other words, as I said, women love drama. And now she gets to partake in some drama. Creating drama for your soon-to-be ex-wife who's an asshole. Uh, Then I agreed. Rose set some rules. We're not going to have any actual physical relationship. She doesn't send nudes, but she's okay with pictures of us hugging. And whenever I sleep over, I get her couch and pitch the food for the movie night. Hey, whatever. And don't even start to think about falling in love with Ro, dude. I can see this a mile away. She's your your bro in a chick's body, and she's helping you. Fine. But don't go falling in love with her. You got work to do. I might get a smack for this, but I always thought those teen movies where the popular girl tries to fix the geek, 
to make the ex jealous with the stupidest things I've ever seen. But I must say, living through it is absolutely entertaining. And with all that, the plan was set. And we put it in motion, and we started with exchanging texts later that night. After more than a week of texting to one in the morning and guarding my phone for my wife, as she did with hers, she finally said something about it. She told me she was tired of seeing me work all the time and how lame I was for texting my teammates after seeing them all day at the office. Uh, don't bite the hand that feeds you, honey. I'm the, it's my work that's providing. That's when I smiled and told her, I am texting, but not my teammates. And with that, I shut my phone and went to sleep. I could tell it bothered her since she was restless and for almost an hour and nudged me to wake up four different times. Gee, what's wrong with her? Is she worried that she has competition all of a sudden? Because believe me, she never thought she was going to have competition. The following day, my wife told me how she was bored and she felt like I neglect her and wanted me to take her to one of her favorite restaurants tonight. And we could even have SEX. Oh, goody. Thanks, wife. Of course, old me would have been excited thinking she was still interested in me and wanted us to go on a romantic date. But Freddie Prince freaking Jr. me just smiled and told her, Sorry, honey, I have a date tonight. I swear she froze for a second. What do you mean a date, she asked. Then I repeated precisely what Roe told me to say. A co-worker that went abroad used to ask me to sleep with her constantly, but I refused since I was married. She came back recently, and I told her my wife had opened the marriage, and if she was still interested, to call me, and she did. I could tell she was getting anxious as she kept pressuring for more information as I started to get ready for work. She kept asking, in what department is she from? How old is she? Is she married? Does she know you're a married man? Etc., etc. But I kept giving her yes, no, and don't know answers. And let me tell you, if you want to get a woman angry, answer yes or no to everything she asks. Man, it was beautiful. I bet this felt good. Then after I had enough fun and she was getting angrier and angrier, I didn't want to miss work. I kissed her in the forehead and said, don't wait up. Ro wants me to take her out to dinner after work and before going to her house so it could take a while. And you told her the girl's name, who she hates. Let me tell you, SSM, the look of horror in her eyes was priceless. So much for the first time in a while. I felt in control. A control I wish every doormat could feel. What I tell you when a man starts feeling strong and powerful and in control. Game changer. This is why men have to raise young boys to be this way. You're not going to get this from, generally speaking, a bunch of a woman raising you with a bunch of freaking emotional sisters. All that feminine energy around you. Of course, my wife began to spam my phone with texts as soon as I left. First, asking where I was going. Then she needed me to come home sooner since she had to close the door and tomorrow would be an early day for her. As if I don't have any, if I, as if I didn't have keys to my own house. Then she was going all out with someone else and that I would never told her sooner about the date and I was breaking the rules. Now, you're the bad guy. She's been hooking up with dudes left and right for all these months and you're the bad guy? Because this isn't going as she expected. She expected you to be a weak little bitch and continue on. And you know what? You might have been if you didn't meet Ro or have Ro send you to my work. But you've been born again. After an hour of not responding to her texts or phone calls, she escalated to how she was feeling bad and I had to go back now because she might, not, she might need to go to the hospital. What a freaking drama queen. After through my work day, I got texts from her mother asking me if I was okay because Jessica called her crying that she couldn't find me and didn't know if I had an accident. I told her I was fine, but my mother-in-law kept insisting I should go see my wife since she gets pretty scared and can use some pampering. Pampering? Something tells me uh, this, your wife's mother, probably was well in on the plan, rushing into the marriage and all that. I told her not to worry. I would let Jessica know I was okay and that I had an important meeting that day. So I will turn off my phone. After that, I turned off my phone and had a great day at work. Later that day, Ro and I watched Thundercats while eating pizza. Thundercats? Are we talking about 1980s Thundercats? I used to watch that in the mid-80s, man. After a few episodes, she gave me a blanket and pillow and told me to rest because tomorrow there would be a war waiting for me at my house. And boy, she was right. I can only imagine, brother, but 
you have an open marriage. The wife wanted this. So, of course, you can go out and have dates and sleepovers and all that because that's what she wanted, of course. Anyway, the story must be getting super long, and I just wanted to thank you for posting your videos and giving us, us advice. Just know your work and effort in doing what you do truly helps since it's never too late to learn. And if you do read this story and anybody wants to know what happened the next day, how my wife snapped while I faked dating Roe, and where I am right now, I'll be happy to write it to you. Have a great day. So, guys, I'm, I'm sure you're all screaming at this point, saying, what the hell? Want to know what happened when he got home and the continuation of the story? Well, we're about 35 minutes into the story, and I need a break. So, we'll be doing part two just as soon as this guy right sends it over to me, because I, I know this will be a good one here. But, bro... You have gone through fucking hell. And great job. And, and again, give a big hug to your friend Ro for pointing you to my work and helping you in this plan. Yes, going to the lawyer and divorcing was the right thing to do. And you're on this path now. And as soon as it can be done, the better. But yes, you can have a little fun with her now because you certainly deserve it. But I want you in the meantime, between now and obviously when I hear part two, to be hitting the gym, eating healthy, losing any extra weight you have taking action, watching more of my videos, reading books, everything, self-improvement to make yourself stronger. Notice the more you're starting to open your eyes to things and take control of your life, you're feeling stronger and more confident and it's having a positive impact of your life around you. And don't you go following, falling in love with Roe, for God's sakes. I don't want that to happen, okay? Do not do that. You are forbidden from falling in love with Roe. Roe, you, you see this thing? Do not, uh-uh. Make it abundantly clear so he understands in his male mind it ain't happening. You're his bro in a chick's body. And you can do this, brother. So I eagerly await part two, and, and I'm really enjoyed this, and I'm proud of you. You went through hell, made a shitload of mistakes, but plenty of guys did the same thing. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. You want to see part two, which I'm sure you all will, especially if you watch this long, let them know in the comment section. And the more you guys comment, part two, part two, or updates or whatever, the more I'll quickly write it out, send it to me, and I can publish the next story. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.